What we like. Just before the onset of what turned out to be a seemingly interminable Michigan winter, the unavailability of an SI's winter tire for the Mustang Shelby GT350 led us to decide on a California vacation for our long-term steed. While on its winter retreat, capabilities that can go untapped in the Midwest became apparent on the Golden State's more exciting roads. The scalpel sharp steering and marvelous chassis dynamics dissect canyon to lens with surgical precision. Track specialist cars such as this are often painful to live with on a daily basis, but the light foot clutch eases left leg strain in L. A is neither ending stop and go traffic. The roads are smoother out there, too, with bumps largely limited to jagged concrete joints, even so, the magnet or heological dampers smooth them out like an industrial grinding machine. What we don't like. The 2,400-mile excursion across the plains and through the mountains to reach California certainly helped improve our observed fuel consumption, which is now up to a modest 18 miles per gallon. That isn't terrible for a car like this, but its 16-gallon fuel tank became an annoyance, requiring frequent visits to the pump. Not once has a driver surpassed the 300-mile mark on a full tank of premium. We'll see if that mark can be reached on its return trek to Michigan. What went wrong? Since our last update, the 5.2-litre Voodoo V8 has developed a thirst for 5W50 synthetic oil. Over the past 11,800 miles, the high revving engine has consumed 8.5 quarts. There are no leaks, so we can only assume that it's exiting the quad tail pipes. If this were the 80s, this might be acceptable but it's 2018 and oil depletion has become a rarity. Ford has released a supplement to the owner's manual regarding oil consumption, stating that the engine could drink up to one quart every 500 miles under extended time at high engine speeds, high loads, engine braking, hard cornering maneuvers, and track cues. Our car, however, excepting the odd mountain run and back road blast, of course, has spent most of its life on freeways. Also, while much of the cornering awesomeness is enhanced by the meaty Michelin Pilot Super Sport Chubber, the rear tread reached the wear indicators at just over 20,000 miles, it was $580 for a new pair. Some 3,000 miles later, the right front tire had worn itself to the cords, at which point we spent another $668 for a pair of front tires and to address an alignment issue that was to blame for the aggressive wear of that one corner. With everything now properly aligned, some of the tram aligning spookiness we previously noted has gone away. Despite the steady flow of fresh oil entering the valve cover, oil and filter changes are still required. Before the Mustang embarked on the cross-country tour, we stopped in for an oil change and inspections, dishing out $177. Roughly 9,000 miles later, the oil life monitor indicated it was time for another pit stop which cost $161. Where we went, throughout the Mustang stay in California, the car took multiple trips to central Arizona and spent additional time exploring the sandy beaches of the Pacific coast, as well as transporting acting animals managed by an editor's girlfriend to various filming locations. Now that a third dose of winter weather has yielded to a second spring here in Michigan, we look forward to the factory hot rods return to headquarters will be ready with a case of oil. What we like, the exhaust note of our Ford Mustang Shelby GT350 continues to delight our eardrums. Associate online editor Joseph Caparella sums it up well, I didn't even bother with the radio because all I wanted to hear was the engine. Yes, the 5.2 liter flat plane crankshaft V8 is that special. And the urge to spin the tachometer into oblivion has yet to wear off which has kept our observed fuel economy holding steady at a modest but acceptable 17 miles per gallon. Drivers regularly rave about the feel coming through the electrically assisted steering system to the microsure dropped steering wheel, and the electrically assisted setup it controls is top notch, communicating clear messages about surface textures and grip from the front tires interface with the surface below. At times, some may even consider the steering to be overly enthusiastic. More on that below. What we don't like, so far, complaints are few. One recurring gripe, 
although the steering returns superior feel, it demands constant attention. The amount of tram aligning that occurs on uneven tarmac can be alarming. If the driver is caught off guard, the Mustang can be quick to leave its lane with little warning. This quibble is one we're willing to live with, being a product of meaty Michelin rubber and an aggressive alignment. Although the tailpipes emit a stirring tone in their throatiest setting, when the driver summons peace and serenity via the dua mode function, a less than pleasant noise from the valve train becomes apparent in the 2000 revolutions per minute range, right where the needle resides while cruising on the highway. What went wrong? No mechanical faults have occurred, but perhaps you might recall the raccoon strike from our first report. Even if you don't, we can't forget it, and neither can our bank account. Once the final bill for the repairs was tallied, we were shocked. Not only did the critter take out the front fascia and the lower splitter plus necessitate the application of some fresh grabber blue paint, it also bent the oil cooler that resides behind the bumper cover. Those repairs alone evaporated just north of $1,750. Then things got out of hand. Replacing the affected over-the-top white stripes for the front fascia, which are sold in the aftermarket only in individual sections, cost $1,408 plus another $100 for installation. Striping the entire car was only a $475 option from the factory. In a final blow, replacing the clear vinyl bumper protecting film cost $685. All said and done, the tally was $3,684. Come on, Rocky boy, did you have to cause so much trouble? While we're on the topic of service, a regular oil change was called for at 7,750 miles, a trip to the dealer for 10 quarts of synthetic 5W50 oil, a fresh oil filter, and inspections cost $150. Where we went, the Mustang was yet to venture much beyond the borders of Michigan, its birth state, meaning the odometer is rolling somewhat slowly. Of course, somewhat paradoxically, the car is quite often traveling very quickly as it piles on miles. And we have made a few excursions to northern Michigan, including the gloriously desolate Upper Peninsula. The recent completion of our long-term tests of both the Ford Mustang GT and the Chevrolet Camaro SS left a void in our pony car stable. To fill that emptiness, we wrangled a back-to-back -back 10 best cars winner a blue oval thoroughbred, the Ford Mustang Shelby GT 350. Its precision handling, powerful Brembo brakes, and wild 8,200 revolutions per minute treadline have fascinated us since our first behind thrill exposure in late 2015. The durability of carbon fiber wheels induced curiosity, and a few staffers lobbied for the pricier R variant with that equipment. Our daily commutes, though, often traverse roads comparable to the surface of Mars, and the several thousand dollar price tag of a carbon fiber wheel replacement made us cringe. We settled on the $57,045 intra-level factory hot rod. Pushing the as-tested price up to $60,520 was the $3,000 electronics package as well as white over-the-top stripes for an additional $475. A tribute to shall buys of yore. Our car can be considered fully equipped since the only other options are premium paint choices or the allowed $7,500 GT 350R equipment package. After the initial 1,000 mile break-in period was completed, the high revving flat plane crank V8 propelled our new grabber blue ride to 60 miles per hour in 4.2 seconds and through the quarter mile in 12.4 at 118 miles per hour the car circled the skid pad with 1.02 grams of lateral grip. Those numbers all slightly improve on the results of our 2016 model test, but none are as mind-blowing as the menacingly loud exhaust note, we measured 95 decibels in the cabin at wide open throttle. The exhaust has the ability to stop bystanders and, apparently, wildlife dead in their tracks. One example, let's call him Rocky Raccoon, took an extra long look at the Shelby's front bumper requiring a trip to the body shop for a replacement fascia with fresh paint and stripes. Rest in peace, Rocky. So far, comments in the GT350's logbook rave about the agile chassis, 
comfortable yet supportive recaro bucket seats, and, to no surprise, that explosive exhaust. One staffer even sketched a heart with an arrow through it that contained GT350 and his initials. Critics have pointed out a few unpleasant vibrations transmitted through the shifter, not uncommon for this powertrain, and the inability to hit the red line without breaking the speed limit. Those quibbles are easily forgivable as this steed screams its way toward its first scheduled service.